Good day and welcome back to the channel everybody. For those of you new here, my name is Dr. Mim. I'm a medical doctor here in the UK and today is yet another episode of Weeb MD, where we've been reacting to and kind of breaking down the medical aspects of the anime Cells at Work. Today we're going to be taking a look at episode 3 of Code Black entitled Excitement, Swelling and Emptiness. If you've missed my reactions to the first two episodes of the series, first of all, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any more episodes and I'll also put a playlist at the end of this video for you to catch up on. Just a quick disclaimer, I've read the synopsis for this episode and you guys in the comments have kind of been warning me <laughs> about what to expect with this one. So if you're someone who's easily offended by words such as semen, sperm, man milk, or basically anything that references the crown jewels, then before disliking this video, just remember I did warn you about it. For all you guys still around, let's jump into it. <laughs> Straight into it. Straight into it. God, can you imagine if that alarm was being broadcast to outside the body every time you got turned on? The body is going into a state of arousal. I repeat, the body is going into a state of arousal. I'll give you three guesses as to what the specified location is, assuming that this is a male adult. That pun, that pun never gets old. What the cell is going on? I'll tell you what the cell is going on. They're in for one cell of a ride. So I guess this is kind of common knowledge, but there's going to be some people that don't know. But when you get an erection, the reason why everything ends up looking the way it is, is because as they're showing, a rush of blood enters into the penis. Nerve impulses from the brain and from local areas cause the corpus cavernosa, which is a component of the shaft of the penis, to relax and expand. And that subsequently allows blood to flow into it more easily. And this buildup of blood in the corpus cavernosa causes an increase in pressure, which results in an erection. Yay! Congratulations, you did it! This video is definitely getting flagged for being <laughs> for mature audiences or inappropriate, despite it being educational. So guys, I'd really appreciate if you could share this video if you are enjoying it, because otherwise no one's going to see it. So they mention a substance called cyclic GMP, which stands for guanosine monophosphate. And this chemical causes the smooth muscle in the penis to relax to allow the inflow of blood. But in order to control this mechanism so that there's not just a constant supply of cyclic GMP and that you have an erection that lasts forever, eventually the cyclic GMP gets deactivated by something called PDE5. And interestingly, for those people that find it difficult to get or maintain erections, the medicine sildenafil, or as it's more commonly known, Viagra, actually works by inhibiting that PDE5 enzyme so that the person with this problem has more cyclic GMP flowing around, which allows them to have more blood flowing into the corpus cavernosa. Oh, what a naive, naive boy. Little does he know that not every time a man gets an erection, it's for reproduction. You got a lot to learn, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused now. Are they talking about the human's erection or do red blood cells get erections? Man, I thought I learned everything at medical school. There's still so much more to learn. <laughs> I've experienced many erections. Nani? Oh great, the body now has a total of three recurring white blood cells. That's great, that's enough. That's enough for a human body. You don't need more than three. So just to give a bit more detail, the sperm are actually developed in the Sertoli cells in the testes. And the process of turning germ cells into spermatozoa, which is just the fancy name for sperm cells, is called spermatogenesis. And this process is encouraged by hormones including FSH, which is produced in the brain, and testosterone as well. <laughs> what the f*** are those? What the f*** are those? <laughs> they look like those massive balloons that people go inside and then like inflate. 
this anime just keeps getting better and better. Seltori Saibo, Seso Naideno, Seigen Saibo, no Shin, Eo Hokyu Nado Okona. Okay, so they've mentioned the name spermatogonia, which is just another term for the germ cells that will eventually mature into spermatozoa. So, sorry, I just can't get over those stupid looking sperms. Oh, jeez, I don't know whether that's funny or if it's going to give me nightmares tonight. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Life is beautiful. Oh no, I got a bad feeling. I got a bad feeling. There's oh no, they're just gonna be suiciding themselves into like a sock. Come on, please make it be intercourse. Please make it be intercourse. They need to get to the egg. Please, I'm so invested in those little weird looking sperms now. Come on. Here we go, here we go, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's just given up trying to get an erection for the human body. He's just on a mission of his own at this point. So usually you find valves more commonly in veins rather than arteries because of the low pressure in the veins, meaning that blood is more likely to flow backwards. So that's where the valves are most effective in preventing that from happening. But in this situation, when you want to maintain a high pressure of blood within the corpus cavernosum, it's really useful that there are valves in these health sign arteries so that they can maintain the blood pressure in the corpus cavernosum and hopefully get a successful erection. That's what we're hoping for, guys. Come on, we gotta believe. It's gonna happen. <laughs> don't talk, don't talk. It's even more weird. It's even more weird. Oh, God. Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier. Some people can have difficulty getting or maintaining an erection, and that can be for really a multitude of reasons, ranging from things like psychological issues, including things like depression, stress, anxiety, all the way to things that can stop the effective flow of blood into the corpus cavernosa. So things like diabetes, high blood pressure, smoking. Depending on what the cause is, this problem can sometimes be fixed or reversed, for example, using things like Viagra. But occasionally when the cause of the erectile dysfunction can't be reversed, for example, people with irreversible nerve damage. There are still some other treatment options including things like surgical procedures where an implant can be placed inside the penis. All joking aside, if anyone watching does have any problems with their erections or with erectile dysfunction, go see a doctor about it. We've seen it all, we've talked about it all, it'll be fine. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. There's nothing that you can show a doctor that he hasn't seen or heard before. It's very, very rare. <laughs> Maybe the girl that was arousing him in the first place started asking him what his star sign was. That's it, that's enough. Just pff, straight down to semi. Oh my god, I've never seen an erection be depicted in such an epic and monumental manner. It's so heartwarming when, when me and the boys just all work hard together to get that erection going. Come on, lads. I swear to God, this is my first time watching this, all right? Seriously, I'm not joking. But man, Sildenafil, what a drug. It's cheap, easy to make. It was made by the same company that's manufactured one of the COVID vaccines, by the way. So if you can trust them with your erection, you should be able to trust them with your life. Seriously, though, if you get offered a vaccine, just take it. I had the virus. It wasn't fun. You. That's right, yes, modern medicine giving man erections since whenever this drug was invented. I swear to God, they better be getting to an over. They better be on the way through to the ovaries right now. Come on, man. Don't waste all of this hard work for nothing. Please, come on. Come on. 
Okay, so they mentioned the prostate. So just to briefly explain kind of how the prostate works, it basically acts as a three-way valve connecting your urethra, your seminal vesicles, which are connected to the tubes that go to the testes and your bladder. It's about the size of a walnut and it basically controls which fluids go in which direction at what time. So during arousal, it will act to stop the flow of urine coming from the bladder and allow the flow of semen from the seminal vesicles through the prostate and into the urethra. It also adds some fluid along the way as the sperm passes through it. Am I gonna have to blur this out? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why does it look so stupid? Oh, they're setting it up for failure. They're definitely setting this up for failure. Oh god, what's gonna happen? Let's go! Oh, okay, so I think that was a sign of possibly a sexually transmitted infection. During any kind of intercourse or sexual activity, there's always going to be a risk that some germs are going to manage to find their way inside the urethra or even just on the surface of the penis, which can lead to infections. More commonly known ones are things like gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes, and obviously things like HIV are a risk if there's any mixing of bodily fluids. So I guess in the next episode, we'll find out exactly what kind of trouble this guy's gotten himself into. <laughs> Uh, we still don't know. I guess they'll never find out. They're just hoping that every time he ejaculates, it's for intercourse and for reproduction. Uh, a bit of a news flash for you. The majority of the time, it's actually not for that. But with lockdown for the past year, I mean, what would you expect? <laughs> Okay, look, there's no need to feel that guilty, all right? Even if the ejaculation was done during intercourse, you send out about 100 million of those little boys each time and only one gets to the over. So you're sending 99,999,999 of those cute little boys to their certain death. Don't worry about it. You're murdering millions every single time, regardless of whatever you try to do. It, it just can't be helped. <laughs> There we have it. <laughs> so he was actually having intercourse with a human being then, most likely, if he's been infected with gonorrhea. Good for him. And it's also most likely that he wasn't using any barrier protection, which is not so good for him. Again, I'm sure everyone's aware of this, but condoms massively reduce the risk of catching a sexually transmitted infection, as well as massively reducing the risk of getting someone pregnant. Along with Viagra, it's right up there in terms of medical discoveries that have helped to make intercourse great again. Bam, that's it for episode three of Cells at Work, Code Black. I have to say, this is probably my favorite episode so far for a number of reasons. Honestly, you can actually learn a lot from this show. I'm, I'm genuinely impressed at this point. Anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video of me reacting to this episode. If you did, please do leave a like to let me know. And also don't forget to smash that subscribe button so that we can watch the rest of the series together and you won't miss an episode. Hit the bell button as well while you're at it. I'll see you over on Twitch where I stream most Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays at about 9 p.m. UK time. But otherwise, I'll catch you in the next episode. Stay safe everybody take care of your health take care of your erections and i'll see you next time peace